Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So the, today I had the urge to do some tinkering again and I needed to do a repair job. So when I first got into Astro and I bought the CGX mount, I uh, bought the GPS module for it so that I could get ac accurate uh, location and time information and it worked great, no problem. So when I bought the CGXL mount uh, to go inside the observatory, I bought another unit and they both worked flaw flawlessly for some time. Uh, the one that was sat outside uh, on the other pier, uh, it got invaded by ants and uh, ended up having to take it to bits and clean them all out. There must have been hundreds of them in there. Uh, but after that, worked fine, no problems. And then about, I would say another six months to a year after that, uh, it stopped working and it just would not get a position lock uh, on the uh, software so I gave up on that one and the one in the in the obo here it was still working fine and then probably a few months ago uh, it just showed signs of struggling to get position locks as well and then it just gave up the ghost altogether and wouldn't find anything at all so I did some digging on the internet previously and it said that there was a small little button cell battery inside it and sometimes that needs replaced and the button cell is actually soldered onto the the PCB inside the GPS unit uh, which obviously makes it a little bit harder to deal with uh, so I thought well what the hell if the units are not working anyway I'll, uh, I'll give it a bash and see what I can come up with uh, obviously I can't order any parts because I don't know what's, uh, what size of battery is in it uh, or what voltage it is so I thought, well, let's tear it to bits first and see what we're dealing with, and we'll take it from there. So anyway, that's what we did. Let's head inside to the house. I didn't take any video of me doing a repair on it. I just did uh, took a number of uh, photographs at the various stages. Uh, so we'll quickly run through what I did. But the good news is, it's now working. So here it is, back on the pier. And you might be able to see on the right hand side of the unit here, you'll see it better in the pictures when we go inside, but I have a standard uh, 232 uh, 3 volt uh, button cell battery uh, hot glued onto the side of the GPS enclosure and it's working perfectly. So let's head inside and see the steps I took to fix it. All right, here we are inside and here is the first of the pictures. So as you can see, I just took the uh, enclosure apart uh, revealing the inner workings, unplugged uh, the small cable uh, from the GPS module, which this ball on the bottom left, uh, which was screwed into the lid uh, of the GPS unit. And the next step was to open up the actual GPS module. Uh, so between the metal support frame and the actual green PCB, uh, there is an RF shield uh, that's uh, using one of those foam sticky pads uh, onto the metal uh, frame. Uh, so there was three solder joints around that that held it in place. So I desoldered one of them and that allowed me to then fold back uh, the PCB uh, exposing the inner workings. So here we are inside looking at the PCB and you can see the RF shield at the top of the picture uh, just folded back. Uh, so this bottom right solder joint uh, was the one that I had to uh, desolder, uh, which was quite hard to do, obviously, being a big metal RF shield. It took a little bit of heat just to, uh, to get that solder joint to release. Uh, so on the bottom left, though, you can see the battery. It's a tiny little battery. So here it is in my fingers here. It's about five millimeters in diameter and about one and a half millimeters thick. Uh, but fortunately, you can see uh, on the PCB it is marked positive and negative uh, and there is some nice big uh, terminals or relatively speaking big terminals uh, that I can attach to should I desire. Uh, so let's just go on to the next one. You can see there's the actual battery section. Uh, as I say, it's five millimeters in diameter, so it's not very big at all. It was a bit fiddly to deal with. And uh, you can see this tin plate uh, fused onto the top of the battery. Uh, and then just the legs coming off of the top and bottom onto the battery terminals. So it is all one piece, including uh, the wire strips that go back onto the PCB. Uh, so I did desolder them and just removed the battery completely. And that's how I've got it in my fingers there. So I did try to read the 
battery model number uh, just to see the specs of it uh, in terms of the voltage and that. Uh, however, I couldn't get a decent light and my eyes weren't working and zooming on the camera wasn't working. Uh, so in the end, I basically gave up. So what I did next was uh, I put some wires. So I couldn't find any thinner wires, unfortunately. So I just used these best I could and I just put some wires uh, solder them onto the two battery terminals, the positive and negative. And then the next thing uh, was to uh, find uh, a battery, a suitable battery. So I didn't know what the battery voltage was at this stage, whether it was one and a half volts or three volts or some other random uh, spec. Uh, so I did manage to find uh, the model number for the GPS PCB uh, IC. Uh, so this PT9258EA, uh, I did a search on Google app, manufactured by PTC, and I did find the data sheet, and here it came up uh, on one of the, or several of the websites, but it was just the same basic uh, data sheet that didn't go into any of the real technical specs or how the, the protocols worked or what all the trigger signals were and all the voltage uh, IOs and things like that. Uh, but when you look at the unit, you can see uh, on this uh, reference application circuit, uh, there is a VBAT terminal going into pin 5 uh, for some reason. Uh, but on the next circuit, uh, you can see on the, the right, just where my mouse is, uh, there is the, the VBAT uh, for real-time clock and uh, the VBAT going into this LDO VCC terminals on 34 and 37, I think it was. Uh, but there was nowhere in this reference document what the uh, voltages are so I was a bit of a loss and I did numerous searches on Google and that and I just could not find anything that would tell me uh, what these pin voltages should be whether it was the normal power supply voltage and uh, what spec that was. Uh, I do see up on pin 53 uh, there is a VDD33 which I suspect is a 3.3 volt uh, terminal uh, and there's also a VCC33 uh, down on pin 25. So I was hedging my bets that it was probably going to be uh, a 3.3 volt uh, device. And the next thing I did was go to GPT, chat GPT, and I asked it. So G I gave it the prompt GPS chip PT9258 as a connection for a battery for a hot start. Do you know what the voltage of this battery should be? And it came back with... Uh, the, for most GPS modules, including the PT958, the battery backup voltage is usually around 3 volts. Commonly used backup batteries are small coin cell batteries like the CR2032, which provide 3 volts. And that was the uh, button cell carrier that I had uh, over on this PCB. Uh, this was an old uh, humidifier, I think it was, that broke. It was in the daughter's bedroom and she turfed it into my office, as they usually do when they're dumping stuff. And so I just ripped the enclosure off it and I kept it because sometimes it's handy, whether it's pulling off jack sockets or recovering some of these LEDs or buttons or buzzers or whatever. Uh, I hold on to some of these things sometimes and uh, I make use of them again. So fortunately, there was a 2302 battery on it and I checked it with my multimeter and it was still reading 3 point something volts. So all was good there. So the next thing I did was to connect that wires up onto the button cell carrier that I desoldered off the PCB and uh, hot glued it uh, after drilling a couple of holes where the battery pins uh, came off the back of it. Hot glued it onto the side of the enclosure, uh, onto the wires, and this is where we ended up. And then it was a case of mounting the GPS uh, carrier uh, into the case. Uh, reconnecting up the cables and tying it all back together and that was that so then it was a case of hoping in hell it worked uh, put it onto the uh, pier and plugged it into the aux port on the cgxl mount turned everything on and fired up the laptop that uh, or the mini pc that this is connected to and uh, connected up the cpwi software and connected over the USB to the, the mount head and sure enough it came up, uh, it's not on the screen, it, it's on down the left hand side, you did the usual searching for mount etc and it found the GPS module and it basically immediately locked uh, its signal and there you can see along the top there enable GPS is active and the date and time and its position came in pretty quickly so really happy it appears to be working again 
And the benefit as well of the way I've done it is if it ever fails again, uh, I can now get access to the button cell battery. Uh, I can just slot in a new battery and that should be it all good. And there's very little chance that this is gonna catch on anything where it's located. So one success, really pleased by how that went. Next thing I'll have to do is go and do the other one once I can find another carrier. Uh, but I think I'll wait for another day for that. All right, so that was just a quick fix into that. And thanks for watching. Drop any comments or queries down below and I'll catch you sometime for the next one.